Good morning from a blustery and windy Johannesburg in South Africa. Thank you to Father Justin, the Reverend Fiona, the Church Wardens, Parish Council and people of St Barnabas for this sacred and humbling honour of being the guest preacher at Fiona's first Eucharist as an ordained priest. This brings such blessing and grace upon us all straight from the heart of God. I would like to state a disclaimer right at the beginning, simply saying that please, if I have misnamed or in any way offend anybody, know that it's not my intention. My intention has been to be faithful to what God has called me to express and preach about. In the name of God, source of all being, Eternal Word and Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. American poet Emily Dickinson writes, To hope means to be ready at every moment for that which is not yet born, and yet not become desperate if there is no birth in our lifetime. Today it is our joy and our privilege to bear witness to the culmination of a hope which was planted many years ago in the heart and the soul of you, Fiona, and of you, the people of St Barnabas, as a faith community. In a world which is increasingly inhabiting the question of an unknown future, a future different from the past and from the present, we find that we are people in transition between what was and what is to come. And yet it is precisely into this that God's hope-filled reassurance is made manifest in flesh in the form of Fiona and in the form of this parish of St Barnabas. God believes in you. God still chooses to work through a painfully fallible church and her people in a society which is far more likely to give credibility and belief to the consumerist ideology so prevalent in advertising and TV jingles, even religion and church in many people's minds become part of the cultural landscape with a domesticated God. This isn't a new phenomenon. For over 2,000 years, people have tried to tame God in one way or another, but this is self-deception. The grace is that God refuses to be reduced or boxed in, and believe it or not, this too is a powerful form of hope. It's a hope most commonly and uncomfortably presented and activated by those with prophetic giftings, be they individuals and or communities. These expressions, declarations and embodiments of hope will not accept the popularist opinion simply because it is a majority viewpoint which presents itself as factual. This prophetic God hope is about God and us, about God always being for us, about God's faithfulness even when we are faithless. Robert R. Wilson, Hoover Professor of Religious Studies and Professor of Old Testament, writes in his book Prophecy and Society in Ancient Israel the following, and I quote, the task of prophetic ministries to nurture, nourish, and evoke a consciousness and perception alternative to the consciousness and perception of the dominant culture around us." End of quote. And no, this isn't about rebelling against society. It is about engendering a visionary awareness of incarnation, that God's kingdom or reign is indeed come. The challenge for us is how are we to live the fullness of the ways and will of God's reign in such a manner 
that the divine alternative reality is unveiled and becomes more densely substantial than the context of this worldly society. Some of us have already been exposed to some of what this feels and looks and sounds like through God's prophetic gifting in you, Fiona. Your courageous speaking out and conscientizing of us about those who are marginalized, the pounds and the losers of society, our prejudices and our bigotry. And the language which you commonly use is typically prophetic. It's the language of lament and the language of hope. Often it takes genuine grief and lament expressed by the prophet on behalf of God to cut through our human numbness, denial and calloused hearts before we wake up and face the injustices perpetrated by humanity. God's justice always mirrors God's freedom, which for us is a growth in humaneness, compassion, and as Christians, a passion for Jesus. The freedom of each and every living being is as well to become who they are, who we are, divinely imaged to be within the abundance of life. This also includes the freedom to let God be God without any copyright or domestication from our side. And the indisputable hope within this is God's accessibility to us all, not a select group, but authentically to all without reservation, without requirement, without qualification. Today, Fiona, as a priest in the Church of God, today, people are St. Barnabas, through whom and for whom God has called forth this new priest. Remember, and I quote some words by Walter Brueggemann, who wrote these words in his book, The Prophetic Imagination. Remember that hope is within and among us, for we are ordained of God to be people of hope. Hope is there by virtue of our being in the image of the promissory God. Hope is sealed there in the sacrament of baptism. Hope is dramatized in the Eucharist. Hope is the structure of every creed that ends by trusting in God's promises. End of quote. So, dearly beloved in Christ, we are not only custodians of divine hope. We are, all and each one of us, called to be incarnations of hope. Amen.